it's not going terribly well. I don't know what I'm doing today. Do you ever have days like that? I've woken up and it's it's foggy and ordinarily I would say, um, yeah, great opportunity. Well, it is a great opportunity, isn't it? But <clears throat> I'm stuck for ideas of where to go. Yeah, because of course you don't know how far the fog goes. Um, so I've come to a big wide open space uh, over that side all, if I swing around here, woodland that way, or mansion house that way. Which way do I go? We could turn this into a uh, one of those kind of um, adventure games that you played by mail, couldn't we? Yeah. Send your answers to and uh, see whether you're right. Or just wait for the, um, the next scene. Right, well, it's the next scene and I still don't know. Uh, you see, I'm walking more towards the, the big open area. I'm always suckered by these wonderful uh, kind of silhouettes of trees against yeah, really kind of regressive backgrounds. I like it. Got a couple of dog walkers walking through here and you might just be able to see peeking over the top of the trees down there, there's uh, the church. I don't know. Oh, you sent that postcard in yet? Okay, so, there's the tree. It's got to be that one, hasn't it? Straight the way through there. It's a beautiful shape. And one of the things that really works incredibly well with fog is just pulling out the structure of such things. And of course, there's no leaves on it yet. It's still early March. Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's gotta be, it's kind of gotta be shot. It's one of those kind of tree of life shapes, isn't it? So I've got maybe a couple of hundred yards between me and the tree. And of course, I have the opportunity of shooting it here with a, a longer lens uh, or getting closer to it and shooting it more with a wider lens. <clears throat> and I've discovered a problem already walking towards it. It's because I'm going slightly downhill. <clears throat> and what that's meaning is that the tree where it was set against, as you can see, you might be able to see it kind of rebuilding here, when it was set against the, the darkness of the wood behind it before, uh, as we drop down, we no longer get it set against that. And you get it set against more of a lightness, <clears throat> which means uh, there's, a, uh, there's a contrast problem and also a line that runs uh, through the tree. We need to have space between the tree and the, uh, the background. <coughs> what I wanted to try and avoid to a degree is the kind of compression effect of pulling the tree closer to the background using a long lens, but I may not have that opportunity. So uh, let's see what we can manage. Before I change lens, it might just be worth shooting this at kind of 40 mil. I'm getting more of the the, the stuff around it in, but I'm finding also that there's a bit of framing coming in from the uh, the tree over here uh, on the top, and I don't know. It, it's not that I don't like it. It's the it's there as an option because I always say that I'm never quite sure uh, about some of these uh, these compositions until I get them back, and I'm pretty certain I won't much like this. There's just too much, I think there's too much sky. This isn't one of those shots that I need to set, spend ages setting up. Even at this distance, I'm getting a bit of branch creep. So I'll just walk a little further. I'm not sure whether the theme of this video is choose your moment, plan your shots, have an idea of where you're going to go if there's fog, um, and, and, and write it down because my memory is appalling. So if I'd have had an idea of where I was going to go before uh, today, I'd have forgotten already. <laughs> and uh, if I'd have written it down, I'd have forgotten. I'd have written it down. So I, I'm buggered either way. Or the other theme could be 
be prepared with your gear because my gear was strewn all over uh, the, uh, the living room having emptied my bag out to try and find something which wasn't there uh, and uh, I just hadn't put it all back together which again was great and this camera I'm filming with has only got 40% power so I'm going to have to put that on charge the battery in that camera has just run out because I hadn't charged that. I was certain that this camera was charged because I charged it a few days ago and I haven't used it since. So maybe I've got a problem with that. I don't, I, I don't know. But uh, let's just say it's not going terribly well. I'm still very much in two minds about what the heck I'm going to do. So I suppose the thing that I've just forgotten about with fog is that at a distance it looks thicker as you get closer to it it's not as thick as you thought it was so I've walked over here because from over there it looked like there was quite some pockets of it uh, kind of roaming around just the, uh, around these trees here and underneath them and such and who's to say whether it was or it wasn't I think the point is more that it's not there now <clears throat> and I don't think again I've got a shot I do like these trees I like that probably see it that kind of drive going through the the dew on the grass I like that cluster of trees with the really kind of tall mushroom cloud like tree down there but I don't think that's a shot we've got this one coming in over here I think that's quite nice as a shape but it's it's the way in which the tree line beyond it intersects it that, that troubles me more. So I don't think I'll shoot that. And then, let's just put that down. Then of course I've got this little copse in the middle. And that's quite interesting. Maybe a, maybe a wider shot of that, I don't know. Shot of the mansion house? No. <laughs> I've got shots of the mansion house. I've got some nice shots of the mansion. Uh, and uh, not so long ago, I'll put a shot up actually. I stood out in this grassland area and uh, did some ICM uh, of it. I won't do it again now because, well, uh, there's absolutely no detail in the sky. Not that that's a particular problem for my style of ICM if you're interested in my, well it's not my style, it's Andy Gray's style of, of ICM. Uh, but if you're interested in that, then uh, up in uh, the corner uh, of the screen up here, I'll put a link to uh, a, uh, a shoot uh, just a couple of miles away on Cromer Beach, where we're basically shooting honeypot places in a very different style. Now I don't often walk in this direction past the house, but if I am walking uh, along this, this road, I'm coming up from where those people are down there rather than walking down that way. <coughs> and you should always uh, kind of retrace your steps on, uh, on a walk uh, if you can. Or I'm not necessarily saying do the walk twice. In, two directions but if it's a circular walk well I suppose it's got to be a circular walk for most people hasn't it because uh, you've probably parked somewhere and if you only do a walk one way you've got to get back to your car <laughs> anyway my point being that if you're walking two directions there and back or at the very least keep turning around you'll see things that weren't apparent to start with and here's this tree this tree was not apparent to me to start with uh, and actually I really like it. It might not be apparent because when I'm normally here there's no fog. But I love the structure of this. I love the fact that there's so much dead wood laying around underneath it. It's got to be something there, hasn't there? Now I've swapped lens, I've walked around, I've walked around it a lot, but I don't think I'm good enough to make a good image of this. And you may be able to see it's brightened up just a bit. There's a big hole in the cloud up there it's kind of opened there's a bit more light than there was so maybe that's better but the biggest problem is I'm shooting it against the sky and that's just not working I did walk further down there so I could get it more against these trees but that didn't do it for me either so 
I, I think that's a no. I'm still looking at it though. The problem with this way is that there's not enough distance between the tree and those behind it, so the subjects and those behind it, and as we're losing a bit of the mist, separation uh, is vitally important. So, Actually, again, you see what I mean? From this angle, it's invisible. This, and that's why I haven't seen it. It's not the fog. It's just that you can... It, it just disappears from here. Hmm. There we go. Onwards. In conditions like this, what you need to do is make a bloody decision. Decide where it is you're going to shoot because I've been, as you know, in two minds, as I've been in this kind of halfway house position where I've been kind of on the fringes of the, the woodland and not going in and trying to shoot things outside of it. And the problem that creates is sky. There's too bloody much of it. We need to try and make sure that we maintain our eye contact with our subjects. And if we have a big bright sky like we've got here against something that's much darker, then our eyes are naturally drawn to the, the lighter stuff. And uh, in woodland, one of the things you generally want to do is to avoid uh, getting sky in it got the same problem here I haven't learnt my lesson from well the one that I often kind of talk about so uh, yeah I'm going into the woods <laughs> This is nice. I'm really drawn to the 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 richness of the of the dead brackens. They're so beautifully brown. Uh, well, orange. I kind of came into this copse of trees here. Because I was drawn by the the silver birch, kind of like that twisted one down there. Hmm. Not a lot of mist, but a little atmosphere still. It's at close quarters; it's barely there. Uh, but. Yeah, this isn't bad. I might give that twisted one a go. Well, not just the twisted one, because there's, there's three in a line here. I'll have to discount these on the edge here, and probably even, probably even the beach. If I kind of get low, there might be something, and just keep the sky out, maybe a, a 16 by nine. I'm not having much luck already today, so uh, don't hold your breath on this one. It's not a great shot at all. It's okay. Uh, as I get lower, I'm getting more sky and I don't really want more sky. I've got to shoot from kind of waist height to keep that sky out. On the LCD, there's a notion of there being a kind of path running off in the distance. I don't think it's, it is there, but it's just this kind of darker area. And we've got three trees kind of leading to it. And that last tree uh, being kind of twisted uh, as though it, it's, a, it's really kind of pointing. So perhaps, perhaps that idea kind of works. Uh, I've, got to, I've got to use the tripod for this. There's just not enough light to achieve this. Um, e even with Ibis. I, Ibis is great. I mean, there's no two ways about it. It's brilliant. But I think if you trust it uh, to get your shots when uh, absolutely 
you don't need to because you've got a tripod. I, I think you're being um, uh, foolish. If I'm entirely honest, I think you're being foolish. There's, there's no reason to trust Ibis in a situation where you're not rushing and you can just set up a tripod. E even at 4.5, F4.5, I'm only getting the 40 of a second at base ISO. And yeah, I should be able to handhold it, but I'm getting a bit sweaty and hot and perhaps I should have brought a coffee with me. And yeah, I can moan as much as I want. I've got a tripod, I'm gonna use a tripod. My advice to you is use a tripod if you have it with you. Don't, uh, don't be lazy rather than set it up and then try and handhold it and such because particularly in woodland situations where yeah just a, a, a millimeter or two movement on the camera can change your composition massively just don't risk it there's no need now I spy here because I need some breathing room around this this tree on the left and I spy this sticking down and it's kind of in the way uh, so now it isn't I haven't broken anything it was broken uh, and now it's not a confusing element in the image in fact there's another bloody twig there simples <laughs> Now, in doing a bit of B-roll for that past shot, that last one, with, a, with this twisty silver birch, I noticed something that could work. Uh, and basically, if I come at it come from up a little bit, look down on it, underexposed, do a bit of post-processing, I could end up with something that's quite eerie quite uh, quite graphic and you know I like quite graphic things I might give that a go so you can see cameras relatively high looking down on it uh, I've shot a few uh, off of this and I think it's got some potential one of the reasons it works for me is there's <clears throat> a lot of opportunity of darkening down the soil getting getting a little bit of detail and it's still a little bit of highlight but really kind of darkening the soil down but we've got this wonderful mossy uh, trunk leading up there it's catching light beautifully we've got the new growth of the primroses around the edge and I think I've probably only got one in shot yeah just just one in shot this this one down here but it kind of just provides a visual anchor on the bottom uh, right hand side of the image. I'm toyed uh, over moving a couple of um, old um, sticks of, I imagine it's old bracken or something. But again, they're providing just a little bit of kind of definition down there. Perhaps help, helping the anchor. Uh, try saying that when you're drunk. Uh, or um, perhaps a, they're providing visual noise. I don't know. Um, I could, of course, just shoot with and without them. Let's... Uh... <coughs> Gone. <laughs> Let's try it again. Yeah, this might work. I don't know. If you see it in a moment, you'll know that it's worked, or maybe it hasn't worked, and I'll show you anyway. It will be a surprise for us both. There are some instances where kind of shooting this sky and such kind of work. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to justify what I've just done. Uh, I wandered to the outskirts of the 
uh, the wood again. Not because I wanted to, because I had to, because I, there's a fence and a gate that I had to uh, get through past. Anyway, two things. Firstly, I was looking at this tree because, well, I, isn't it wonderful? Uh, yeah, that, that big hole there reminds me a little bit of the, uh, the artwork, the scream, yeah, or a scary movie. I think that, that's great. And <clears throat> I was, obviously there's no particular background. The background is kind of lost. So I'm kind of working on that basis of focusing on the tree. And then we've got this oak or whatever it is over here. <clears throat> and initially I, I uh, put the long lens on to try and, uh, I'll, I'll, actually I'll tell you what, <laughs> I thought I was going to be really clever. Let's, uh, let me, let's take you slightly over here. I thought I was going to be really clever because I spied off in the distance that tree and I thought, hey, I can be like one of those comedians who cracks a joke early on in his routine and then later brings everything kind of full, uh, full circle and says, and I found a shot of this tree, except I haven't. It kind of just about works there. Uh, so I put the long lens on to try and pick that out it just wasn't defined enough uh, against the uh, against the background <laughs> and then like a prat I realized it wasn't the same tree <laughs> the, the one that I was mucking about with earlier is behind that copse through there somewhere over there so it's not even the same tree so I, I ended up stuck with the long lens at me fall over stuff here uh, and well, obviously not stuck because I can remove it again, which is what I did. Because I, I went, I walked further back up here to try and get the uh, the tree in shot, uh, and I wasn't quite happy with the composition because I wasn't quite able to get that one in. I was getting a couple of the branches on in off of it, but it wasn't. It was just kind of creeping in, and I don't think it was enough. So what I done, what I done, <laughs> is. Great English. Put the, uh, the the shorter lens back on it, and and kind of came at it from this direction uh, with a bit of a diagonal line on it. F, uh, shot at f 2.8, and uh, I quite like it. Um, see what it looks like uh, on, on a bigger screen, eh? Here it is. I've walked through the woods, I've come out of the woods, I've found one or two things, but certainly nothing that I found, I felt was worth filming, but I'll put a, more, uh, a few more shots up at the end from what I got in the woods. I mean, really, there's not a lot. But as I was walking back down the, the road here, back to the car park, you can see I've kind of done a loop, so you probably just about to see the, the church over there, which is the same church I mentioned to start with. Uh, still really rather foggy here i tell you, it's bloody bitter actually yeah it, it, there's a, a real chill wind uh hitting me uh here but anyway all right so that doesn't work uh tractor's just gone down there's past me it's gone down here what was interesting me uh is framing uh here it's a shame there isn't a bit more definition in the sky, but further down here, you probably really can't see it very well on this camera, if at all. Uh, gate, road up to the gate, trees on either side, framing in the distance on the hill, a lone tree. And I really like it. Uh, it's a long lens shot. I'm, I'm at about 120 mill something like that and uh, obviously very mute colors there's not a lot uh, in the uh, in the shot except uh, yeah some shapes leading to something that's framed um, it's it's a shot that I will probably take again in different conditions I really rather like it uh, I don't often walk back up and down here so uh, yeah when I'm driving I'm normally worried about something coming in the opposite direction for the most part this is single track so I, I kind of don't see it there you go enjoy mm -hmm. 